Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. What's up, bro? What's up? What's happening? How y'all doing? I'm a lot better than where I was earlier this week. You know, I always like to start it off with like some music for the kids and check you know, but kind of space and the energy for the evening. Yeah. Yeah, man. Good morning, baby. Hi, y'all. Hola, I'm good. This is anniversary weekend for so I'm all. Ooh, anniversary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. April. Oh. Yeah, I just came back in town from the beach with the kids in spring break. So then I got three fucking kids. I got two different you know, spring breaks. This week was the, the little kids' spring break. After I come back in town with the wife Monday morning, I go get the big boo and it's her spring break next week. So. Yeah, true, true. Bella. The week of just. A lot of work. Yeah, fucking around went to the beach. It was not a, it was not a good day for me. It really never is. I don't like the beach. Okay. For the kids and the wife, I go places I don't normally go. I get myself out of my comfort zone, but it was extremely cold. Like this time, I made sure everybody had their shit packed, packed everything on the roof, got down the road, got to the hotel, opened the suitcase, looking for my clothes. I'm like, where's my clothes? I know I put my clothes in the bag. Yeah. Little man got his clothes. Little mama got her clothes. Wife got her stuff. The dogs got their shit. Still not my shit still the damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to go out and go get some little shit that I did not want to die. On the uh, man. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I had to go get some shit I did not want to die. End up thinking the weather's gonna be something, so I'm like, all right, I buy I need some shorts from my hand. You feel me? Once again, I forgot I didn't pack all my shit, so I got the little underclothes and all the garments, got the shorts and the shirts I needed. It's kind of okay. Get to the beach the next day, and is it freezing? Nigga, it is cold. But I get cold. So it could just be me. I'm at the beach in the chair, the kids playing the same, wife taking pictures. I'm wrapped up. And shirts and everything else shivering my ass off on the beach. Like, it's cold as shit out here. Mm-hmm. Like, nigga, you know, oh. I look mad, but I ain't mad. I'm just cold as fuck. What's that? Yeah, so. In the office looking like Bernie Sanders. Huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. just like that. Mm-hmm. Just like Bernie. But you like a, a, all- a woman, a one mm-hmm. woman in the office, in the office setting. Always want to. Oh, we got a cup and a blanket. Or, uh, yeah, I, I go to work with a foot on every fucking day. Yeah, I'm cold as shit. I'm cold quick as my. I, mean, I walk around the house with hoodies. Yeah. This girl cap ain't for the show. I wear this every day in the house. Every day. I, hey, I feel it, man. I be getting cold quick, too. Then, but I get hot quick at the same time, so it's weird. Oh, this nigga has had on long socks and beanies in the house with sweat, like, every day. Yeah. Since like seventh grade, like this is like not a thing that grew that he grew into. This is like kind of who he. Is. So I don't know. I don't know what thing is like circulation or what. You would think I'm a fat motherfucker, but I'm not. No, sorry. I do it so much. My th- my son thinks it's a fashion thing that I'm doing, so he be trying to do the same shit. I'm like, I'm cold. You know. <laughs> You better go there. No, man. Take the bed shit off. You, you gonna be hot. Hot mm-hmm. as fire out of Well, mm-hmm. but me and the wife doing good. Uh, continue to move on to another successful year. Uh, what is it? This will be year six of marriage. Uh, with June and 12 years ago. No, nah, it'll be good. Eleven years ago, the June, so things trying to push on work issues, communicate, 
like 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 anything in life, um, you get you gotta you gotta pray for it. Um, we we try. I'm gonna say that we try and we doing a good job of trying. So, hit the top of our celebrate the anniversary this weekend. So, I'm just looking forward to and looking forward to some time just me and the wife. You know, just really looking forward to that. And that's what I really enjoy. Most most men on the anniversary they they look forward to where you just say wife look forward to it. Like me, I really look forward to my anniversary weekend. Is I look forward to just having that time just with my wife. Cause our lives be so busy with dogs and kids and the awesome boss of our jobs and our schedules. So having time just I right, boom just all time and time to anybody to hate me. Like I look forward to that for you. Another thing on top of that. And, uh, yeah, coming through, I have announced that about my Okay. Kind of low on the audio. Am I low? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, now. Yeah. I'm loud as shit now. Yeah. You know, you hear what? You, oh. you you right there. You right there where you need to be. I'm right in the pocket. Yeah, right in the pocket. Oh, I'm in back. Hey, we in there. We in there. Oh. Just in case. <clears throat> yeah, shut up. Pause. Why would you do that? Like, what would just bring that to? Why? See, this is the thing, right? We do accidental pause names. This nigga purposely be saying some pause names. <laughs> like, that's the thing. That's the one that's my obsession. You are walking with me. I know I am. <laughs> bad mistake. Always bad mistake. Resident Rodologist. Shut the fuck up, B. Hell no. Pat around. No, 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 no. We are not bringing that evil upon me. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. Oh, this nigga the rod. No, hell no, bitch. No. No, no, no. We ain't. The infallible. They call, they call cat and butcher. Shut the fuck up. I, you know, I don't have to deal with this. Oh, I've been through a lot. I, I, don't, I don't really know. Oh, that nigga thing. That nigga thing's off my dick list. Shut the fuck up. How many times do I say shit? No, 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 nigga. Oh, this nigga business, nigga business party. Oh, What's the eggs anymore? This nigga is the worst party. All 50. I hate y'all with a pastor right now. Pause. Oh. <laughs> Thirteen. That's a good way to start the show. It's a horrible way to start the fucking show. Oh, terrible. I, I just... He is the dictator of call. No. Oh. No. Nah. the name of this Oh no. <laughs> Oh, just back to that. I can be dick crazy. He had a cool watch. No. He has some. He has some. Yeah. 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 Like, I was on TV the other hey, day. Hey, you I a, too. If you do get a smartwatch, it do make you feel like dick crazy. Yeah, it do. Around like, uh, yeah, like uh, that nigga has had the first yeah. half watch. 
yo, to fight crime. I'm telling you, yo, that shit make you feel hella like, like if you grew up in that era where Dick Crazy was a movie that you watched and like, and from, from that shit, like I remember that shit, and I remember the cartoon was before our time. But for you, that grow up like, seeing Madonna as she looked now. If you saw Madonna and Dick Tracy, yo, Madonna, you understand me? Madonna was bad back in the day, you know, compared to all the other women. I I shot right in her mouth. No, now she looked like a damn uh, bad bitch. She looked like the white. She looked like the white version of Lil Kim. She looked like a brother. Bro, that is the that is the most spot on goddamn that is damn straight on. Yes, that is exactly what it is. She had yeah. tip of this fall. God damn. The white little Kim up. Uh, little Kim is the black Madonna. Yeah. I only saying that because Donald came out first. But little Kim fucked her facial with practice over. Yeah, that she did. That she did. I blame the industry uh, for not safeguarding her self esteem. I also blame yeah. her. No. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, you got to blame the person. Yeah. You pay. Well, you I pay for that thing. You have to look. Yeah. You know you got to look at look yourself in the mind. Oh man, you said this. This, this shit look good. This you remind yourself. Nah, you truthful with yourself. You truthful with yourself. People, people keep talking about this. Uh, you know, I blame this person and that person for this and that. Let's be clear. It's called self-esteem. It's the esteem of yourself. Nobody else can influence that more than yourself. So if you don't like you then fix the things about you that you don't like, but naturally. Like, most of the time, it's personality shit and look. So, like, as far as your face, you can't change your face. But what you can do is change your body, your outlook, your personality, because a lot of times, it ain't really... Like, a lot of times, I'm going to be honest, unless you're a person like me where face is, like, your thing, Paul. You sound crazy? Yeah. Oh, baby, no homo pause on facial feature. What I mean, yeah, like a woman's a woman's face that. is like the thing, not the body. You feel what I'm saying? Like the body is like negotiable because like all bodies fall off at some point. Even the BBL ones, all that shit, like even Bernice Burgo is gonna fall off. Like it just it just happens. It's natural, you're gonna get stretch marks, you're gonna get wrinkles, you're gonna get a, Cellulite, you gonna get. You know, if you're white, you might get some you know, goddamn what they call them shit, some liver spots, whatever. You gonna get some varicose veins. Stretch marks. Yeah, some stress marks, man. Stress marks make it you know, like, dog. like the body ain't really like the vital thing. There, as long as you got pussy and titties, I, I can work with the rest. You know, them tiger stripes. But what do matter is your face, because like as you get older, even if you get wrinkles, if you was pretty young, you pretty old. Like, I love women that's old as fuck, but they pretty shit. You know what I'm saying? And as you get older, your your taste change. So I'm gonna be growing older, looking at the same pretty woman, but you know the body might change. But I'm gonna still be like, yeah, you feel what I'm saying? So like that's what I be thinking about. But most dudes don't really care that much. It's more about like, I do. I'm a baby. No, but hear me though. Hear me though, because I'm gonna bring it on. Bring it on. Let me bring it on. Let me lay. What I mean by that is, if you take uh-huh. a looking girl, a baddie, an ugly girl, right, and you put all three of them in a room, and two of them girls got a bad personality, I don't care which two of it, the one that got a good personality gonna probably get some play. Yeah. Even if she's not attractive. In the face, if she got an okay body, like, but she cool as fuck, she'll get a dude. Because most dudes, at the end of the day, like, they'll settle for worse than what the standard was if the personality is so elegant. 
because you that's gonna trump everything. You get a woman that's like, I'm gonna take care of you, I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna that's make sure you do it, I'm gonna peace, I'm gonna I'm gonna rub you down when you get home. When you get home, I'm gonna give you that 30 to 45 minutes, maybe even an hour to just, you know, go ahead and decompress. And then, you know, I ain't gonna nag you about like a woman is just chill as fuck. She gonna win every time. I don't care what she looks like. So that's what I mean, like for a dude, for a woman, they'll deal with a the dickest of niggas. Just you look good, and I know that because I'm I'm in one Ain't of those, money. I'm in the top twenty percent of look. You feel me? So I understand what, what, what we talking about. Like you could be uh, and if the nigga be secure. If you look good, a woman will still take the hand on like I can I can grow the rest of it. No, you can't. Chill, get that point. We was what we was when we got here. Well, see, the older I get, well, as I have an age, that's, that's pleasing to me. For the opposite sex, it's changed. Like, it used to be I was an ass, man. But as I got older, it's like, I'm I'm not fucking your ass. That's just for aesthetic. Yeah, and it's aesthetic. Like, the thing that's really turning me on is, like, our, 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 the connection we have and, like, your face. Like, period. Like, it had to be. It has to be a some quality standard in the looks. Like you don't have to have big big breath. You ain't got to have a fat ass. So it's all that's interchangeable. Because I'm not fucking your ass on your titties. You and I got to look at you in your face more than look at you in your ass. So the aesthetic, ooh, that's good, but. To actually get some substance out of what I'm looking for, what I want, then bond, you have to have the ability to have a bond. Because you can't talk, I can't talk to you. So I can have that your ass in you. And you can't talk, what the hell is the use? I can have these blessings, you can't talk. And have the ability to, to be able to make a bond, it ain't nothing like that. You, you can't. Uh, can't, those uh, aesthetic things, the older I get, those aesthetic things, I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. And they turn it down, it does it. Because anybody can go hop out and get a fat ass, get it or whatever, but you, you, you yes. can't artificially get That's the shit that, the shit that sucks, that you can't artificially go to a doctor and get. That's the shit that's long standing and long last. Look at Black Chandler. She had a fat ass. Yeah, that's gone. Because she went to hand out. And you don't even have to go get a BBL. You can go to that place and put the, the suction cups on your ass cheeks, girls. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. It works. They come in the Walmart. Go in the Walmart. Go buy your ass to 19 bro. Let ass cheeks right now. Go in the Walmart buying vacuums just for the ass. Let me show you. 1999. Sure, go get your feathers in 1999. Save all them thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. And possibly your health, the health risk you pose and putting yourself injecting that shit into your body. Yeah. Is, that, is having a fat ass worth your life? Yeah. Is that, is the attention that it draws, that, that pertinent. Hey, you know what? I don't want to lose this energy. And since we already did a good session, I'm going to just Hey, man, what's up, guy? Hey. Hey. A show where we separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy, the Tiz. And uh, I'm always along with. Hey, that one here, the other third of the partners. And um, I'm about to go downstairs and microwave these blunts. Uh, Wild Face introduced himself. Uh, long dramatic pause. And I'm along with. Well, that in my face. I'm here. Clear. I don't see no deal. Okay, James Bond. I don't see no deal. I do. Are we clear? I'm a beer drinker.
definitely in there. What? He said, I'm a, he said he don't drink no beer. We would have had a good rhyme going. You just had a cipher, and then you just came in with, I'm a beer I drink. I was doing the ad libs. Oh, old dirty bastard face ass come here with just a whole nother vibe. They ain't, ain't got shit to do with what's going on. <laughs> okay, homo. Got you. Dough, nigga. Dough. Why? Hey, man. All right, look. So, uh, if y'all caught the pre game, man, uh, we was, uh, A lot of shit, but we we ended up talking about like you know, poet behavior, and it led me. Into- to be given- so my come on, a podcast. What the fuck? Hey man, yo, hey, hey, we gotta get the core. <laughs> like, oh man, I can't edit this shit out. That's too loud. Boy, you alright? Get there, microwave. Why do I need to pull up? Do I need to drive across town? No, you good. You good. You need to find the microwave. And it's winning. It's like. Right. Between rattle, rattle and roll face and goddamn smack and smack cat. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. At least my nickname right now. So going into the first topic, uh, <laughs> don't call yourself that no more. Let that just be a one-off joke that I made, and we just gonna move past. But when you re- reiterated it for some reason, it just took a hold. That's what they were about to. Yeah, they call me smacking his face. No, no, I will not. No, we do that. No, nah, I don't want y'all. What you smacking? It's not him. Um. So, uh, don't want to park. Oh shit, man! What is happening? All right, so I was watching the podcast lately. All right, all right, all right. We're going to get it together. Let me get it together. Let me get it together. Get it together. Oh, okay. Oh. So I was watching a podcast lately, and um, these porn stars, right? Yeah, man, shut up, yo. Let me, let me, let me land. Let me land, champ. Let me land, champ. Chill out. <laughs> I can't do this if you go through that, man. Come on, man. Let me get this out. All right. So I was watching these podcast these porn stars kept complaining about how like they were struggling finding meaningful relationships, husbands, etc. Because of the fact that, you know, they have this footage on camera that's kind of following them. A lot of men don't really want to deal with that and the scrutiny that comes behind that. So when they me to say right, you know, they always think you can't turn a hole into a houseway, but I, I was like bring it and just kind of ask like, is it possible to turn a hole into a houseway? Like could you date a woman with an extensive body count? Why or why not? No. It's funny that you brought this up. It's like our mind being a certain place. Now I was actually having this conversation to myself, just hypothetically the other day. This was random thinking, like, can you turn a whole to a house? Like, does a motherfucking body count really count? Like, in the present day, because you're not dating somebody going backwards. You're dating somebody going forward. So, as far as men or women, like, me personally, I don't think a body count should count because my body count to me is the a woman off the yeah. I've done some things in my past. Now, looking at a woman, I can't judge her on her current sex for what she's been in her past because people do change. So, it's hard for you to change, but it's possible for people to do to change. Now, 
would I personally date a person? Um, if I wasn't married, would date a person with an extensive past? Um, at this day and age, at the age I am with my, with my mindset, I could say I try, I try to go into it. Um, I have given a chance. I wouldn't let the, uh, the um, just that turn me, turn me sour to the situation because it could be a great person. You could have had a, with your a whole phase. And your whole phase could have lasted a long time. Or you could have been ho hoing. And you like, you fuck it, I'm going to do it anyway. I think. Who knows? Everybody's everybody's situation different. Um, you could have been traumatized in, in a youth, and that's how you express your express yourself. You sit different situation, different people. Um, then I, I deal with the things I deal with. I know that some people express themselves and act out sexually due to different traumas they had. They had nothing to do with sex, but that's just what they do. Um, some people are more passive affected through sex, so. To show people that they care, they just automatically just want to have sex with the person they, they think they care about. But I can't judge you based on your past actions because I got past actions too. And if somebody judged me terribly and my past actions would be fucked up because I'm no longer the person I used to be, I'll do a lot of assumption that you can do so. Okay, and if you're like, well, that's fucked up, right? Uh, I, I did that. I'm, I'm 20 years old, older than that, so I think it's right But each person is different. Um, in my younger days, I thought it was like, nah, I'm enough with her. She can deal with everybody, everybody, everybody. Because the stigma is different. Um, in the younger days, you care more about what other people think and you care about what the outside is. And, and you're you always trying to find a thought of how you look, what your, what your position is, or you don't want to be looked at as stupid and all this other stuff to everybody else. And you're highlighting outside thoughts more than your, your true thoughts for individuals. And at the end of the day, if you're truly passionate about an individual, fuck with everybody and say, go forth with your feelings and your thoughts and your ideas have fun. But once again, in the younger days, you don't see that. All you see is what's right in front of you. So a high number for a female to a younger man, it's it, it definitely going to stray away. You know, a young man got a high number because all he's looking at is, you know, let this many men do this to you. Not realizing, okay, that turn and look at the same thing. You know, let this many women do the same thing to you. You know, you may be entering their vagina. Hey, how many women did you put your mouth on? How many? It's been like, it's insane. Yeah. That's, a, that's was, just what my man. Uh, go ahead, man. Hey, go ahead, me? Yeah, you. Yeah. Hey, hey. Here. You talk. Oh, no, no, I wasn't sure. What? No, the face was still down. <laughs> what you saying? Here to you, Pat. No, no, I wasn't sure if Face was done what he was saying. I ain't want to interrupt. Nigga, no. Yeah, I'm good, homie. No, but uh, I would say, really, it's more for me is like, how close to your past life are you? You still in and out, deviling with everybody right now? Like, then I, I'll wait till you calm down. I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm more concerned with. If uh, how many attachments, soul attachments you had with these other men? Like, if it's just some, you know, a fling from here and there, I don't, you know, that don't really matter. But if you are like, let's say, if you like fell in love with this many men and you still like in love with that many men, then that might be a problem. Whatever. Might be comparing me to these niggas, and I'm not nowhere near these niggas, or whatever. But as far I don't know, it just has to be it. It, it depends on the extreme of it. Like, how close are you to that life? Are you are you just yesterday said, "Hey, I'm gonna stop my whole shit." You know what I'm saying? Was he just the previous summer? Like, it just it has to be some some year. No, I don't want to say this, but it just has to be a certain amount of time or whatever you can. Like, you could have did something a couple of months ago, and the repercussions for that, whatever it is, could pop up later on. You know what I'm saying? I just don't want to be involved in all this You handle all that before you come. Heal. Heal first, and then come. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Pat. So, say if you're, you started dating this young lady, and you 
one of your first questions isn't about her past, it's about the numbers. But somehow through conversations and y'all already in a month down the road, you find out that last summer she ended her whole phase of, of two years and she racked up on 30, 30 dudes in total. But you're finding this out after you've already started the develop her. At that point, do you let that deter you or do you continue going forward? It depends if I have to see these niggas. Or, or to be God honest with you, that's all it is. Do I have, am I going to see these niggas? And any time in my life, am I going to meet these niggas at all? Because I ain't trying to meet my ex come up, bro. Why do I want to play my business? Stay up to the Arctic. You know, about yourself, but. I mean, yeah, I mean it's just, just that. It's just like, um, I can't talk because. I'm into freaky shit. So, like, if you do some like shit, you know, for, smoke it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Not giving niggas nothing. No. I don't know what type of shit. No. You never heard of Eskimo brother? Not a, no, not an Eskimo brother. I'm not Eskimo kissing no niggas. No. Nope. No, 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 they don't get me. I don't know. Now you're trying to confirm. The detective means you were fucking the same girl. What? It just means that you and some other guy were fucking the same girl. That's what that means. And you say, ask my
what I feel about it is all right, so I'm gonna say that you and Pat are probably anomalies in the fact that y'all would get a game plan involved. I would say the most men is kind of like nope. so men and women are inverse. Like the more men, the more women that men have had, usually that attract women because it's like they're more experienced. You know, you don't have to be fumbling around trying to find your way around. Um, for women though, like I would say for men, like we a lot of times, like I know for me at least, like I don't really want no woman that's been ran through that. Despite my extremely high body count, I don't want a woman that has one. That's just me. Like most of the women that I, I don't know how to say it in like the respectful way. So I'm gonna just say, <laughs> it. Just say it. Most of the women that I've had intercourse with, they have been limited on their amount of it. So like I'm usually within the first in my younger days I was usually within the first three to four and then as I've gotten older you know within the first 10 and I look at it like every year after 18 that's how many I have to know right so like you might have because you might have had a bunch of one year relationships shit might not have worked out you might have gave shit up you might have kept dating but you know what up alright but at least that's not Pray like that's reasonable to me as a grown man. moving from 18 to wherever I need to, right? So if you're 23, on body, that's the have that. Because now that means there's somebody in there that you didn't count because you, you know, he's stuck in, and, but he, you know, might. Like, there's a whole bunch of weird shit that women be justifying. It's like, oh, that shit really could. No. Might not like the fuck, but you got fun. He, he enjoys that. So, uh, I, I, I would say, like, I, I'm not a fan of my body count. I, I'm, I don't know if you can turn a hole into a housewife per se, but I will say like I would say like to me it's about pair bonding, right? So like you only get a certain amount of them chits before like that shit starts to be desensitized. Like there's literal statistics that say that like women after a certain amount of men, they're more apropos to be divorced than their men. Just all for the fact that they've had more experience. So like now they're like more desensitized to certain things that they're, they're less likely to be able to, like it's a whole bunch of shit to go into that shit. So like I, I feel like the more experience you can have, the more you are now like for women especially because it's an emotional thing a lot of time for women. So even if they just like to do a whole lot that night, it's something for them. Like if that nigga wanna, you know, play that shit into the mall, he could. You feel me? Usually that's the situation unless a nigga really fuck up at sex that night. If he do a decent job, like more than likely he can call them all and they can go from there. You feel me? Whereas a man, like we can literally just have sex and then like we didn't really care in the first place. Like, all right, okay. Need Uber, okay? Marta come around, you know, seven fifteen. I, I don't know what to do. So I think it's it's uh it's more than like the way we Physiologically and like emotionally connect doing things as opposed to, one. but I also I've never because I've never really like had a serious relationship with a woman that's had a lot of bodies on her resume already. I don't really know whether it's possible to turn it off. That's why I kind of brought it to y'all. Like I don't know if y'all have had an experience like where y'all may have dated. Oh no! Oh hell no! I have never, but like in you know, my like in my premarital stage, like before I met my wife, like I didn't want to make it's like you know, one of my qualifying questions I would ask. But like, like my thing is I really don't want to know about your past. I'll find that out down the road when we when we got a bond and I can I, I built myself up to be like I I can learn about your past. Let all the skeletons out the closet. Cause certain things just me, I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know if you had sex with somebody like you three or four niggas, but if you have, and somebody shouldn't be talking. If you have, and at that point, somebody 
I know that no need to notice they just run. They won't let me know anyway. So then I know, okay, you ain't seen the ring because you know I know this person. You ain't seen nothing. So I know that. Go ahead. Cross with my feet, shuffle me to the left or whatever. You feel me? But that's never been one of my main questions. Most of my, like, so I'm known to be a serial monogamous. So the, the relationships I have had, uh, those that when the qualifying question did come up, how many people had sex with before? It was, it was low. It was always lower than four. The females I was in a relationship with were people who like their relationships as well. So they won't, you know, jump around, jump around, jump around. Um, but I've had some fun with horse. Because um, the wife went up, but I've had fun with horse. Um, That's what they do. Um, I find those who have uh, sexual experience are more, or uh, they're for fun. Those who are not as sexual as those who those who settle, you settle down with you know the trash with each other. Um, but that's just my perspective. Once again, I'm not speaking for all because everybody's different. Because all men, we are not a monolith. We all think differently. So um, that's just me. But you know, I'm not a person trying to hold a half life. Um, I, I always always taught by the older people you can't do it. Um, as I've gotten older, I was just you know, it was something you couldn't do. But as far as looking forward, I would never let someone's parents return me from attempting to settle down with them. Whatever we're doing, while we're trying to settle down. But that, that, that hoe actually got to turn herself into a housewife. We can't do shit. She got to turn herself into a housewife. Mm-hmm. That's why I was, I was I would say, I probably should have said that before. Like, when I was talking about how far along are you away from your whole life, you gotta like she has to turn herself into a housewife before you you know what I'm saying get into that because either that or you're gonna wipe her up and she's still gonna be cool and now you're gonna hold for a housewife. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can speak for for the I do know people who have done this and who have attempted to do this. And only anything. Um I've tried to warn people and hey, you might know what you <laughs> I know people. I know people that um, you know with, um, and I and I, and I know the horse person. And, and they know I'm going to say something, but they don't care because they're there. But then they say, "I can't stop another man doing what he want to do." Mm-hmm. Hey, you can only throw the advice in the air. If someone wants to catch it, they catch it. Not when you float over their head like anything else and breathe. Um, but I can say that. Um, these people that I know have learned from their from their mistakes. Um, they received their trauma and their scars from it, and they move forward successfully. Um, but I guarantee that will won't be something they try again. And it's the same for a reason. You can't turn home to a housewife. A lot of tendencies can be broken. Now, if you got a, a you got a perspective hoe and you're trying to wipe her up, you better move to the woods somewhere. Of course, you have no opportunity. You know, yes. if a hoe got an opportunity, a hoe's gonna be a hoe. Now, I will say, um, as far as that porn star situation, you got that to the far point that you were a porn star. In this day and age of media, you, you had the point of no return. Like, it's just not going to work for you. I, I'm sorry. Like, it's just not happening. Like, it's not. Like, we got recorded proof that you were out there in these streets. And you be yeah, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. that if the average guy tried to step up to you when you... you He's gonna feel intimidated about shit. Let niggas rub their balls on your nose. Yeah, that's cool. Oh. Hey, come on, um, B. Hey, y'all. What? Um, have, um, I don't know. Back in look. Uh, one thing. The question I want. One thing be in the streets recorded. Sorry. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my bad. I thought you I interrupted you. Hey, how would you pick it up? <laughs> Got to stop looking at the bottom of my screen. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like the thing is like facial mouth. <laughs> remember, guys, housewives are for you, the hoes. Oh, all right. What I was gonna ask you: Have y'all ever like? All right, so never wiped up. But have you ever been like, have you ever been like fucking with a hoe, and because her vibe was so cool, you found yourself liking her, but you couldn't fuck with her because she was. Yes, that is a platonic friend. No, 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 because I knew that um, I knew the position I played, I knew the position that person played, right there. Um. I try not to put myself in situations where I'm gonna end up setting myself up for failure and mm-hmm. having any, any room for emotional attachment to someone who I already label as actually um, highly active, who is already set up for failure for me. So I mean, that was a, a early issue for me. Um, and one I, I had to learn who this one how the man who just came into it after when I saw that he was part of who was involved females like that because. Started realizing he failed. I was like, no, I can't do this to myself. I can't do this. Um, it's tempting. It's tempting. So, you think it's there. Shit, I'm fucking with the whole already. Shit, I can get skin fresh and it'd be guaranteed with no. You're setting yourself up and you realize you're never the only one. What's the yeah. There's always someone else. When you already know, so you hire yourself. Just like when she's over into the situation, and she's thinking in the illogical situation. She knows your house. She knows there's always someone else. So you both go into it with a, a, a non-verbal contract. That's, that's, don't break the contract. Um, there used to be a point in town when I was in college. I was telling her, um, "Hey, don't think you that." That don't work. No, it didn't. But at least I put the stigma out. Hey. Don't catch me. I'm letting you know that I won't. So you do. You're out of my life. And you're setting yourself up for failure because I've already let you know the expectation for me is not null and void. I have no expectation past this in an encounter, but another encounter. And that encounter will just be physical. There won't be nothing more. And that's the way it was. Um, to your point, was just, you got to be verbal. You got to be out if you always have these encounters and you have any sexual encounters without any conversation, emotions can't arise. And then be assumed that you have the same, the same emotion because you're continuing to continue the sexual activity. You got to be vocal, young fella. You got to tell them what you're not looking for. If you're not in for the long haul, let them know. Hey, if sexual encounter don't happen after that, oh, well, the woman, we are outnumbered here. Hey, double down. I know some fellas back in the day, as we see now, they, they holler at me, what you do, shot. And I was like, man, you holler, yeah, man, because you got to relax. You can't make the shot you don't see. You're right, you're right, you're right. So, hey. So, I will say I had an encounter with someone where I found out later that they were out there in the street. And I was like, I pretty much brought it on. I'm like, uh, so, um, I heard you in these. I ain't say it like that. <laughs> I ain't say it like that. You got this Yeah, and the way you coming at me is like you, you want me to be um, exclusive and shit. But you ain't exclusive. Oh, this is a null and void contract. You know what I'm saying? We cool and everything and whatnot. I don't really got no, you know. You know what I'm saying? Charge it to the game and everything, but uh, yeah, you, you ain't getting those boyfriend benefits like you think you want. No, no, not on that. So, in a sense, it's, it's a it's a sense with for a man, it's more of a sense of self respect for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you want me to stoop down to your level because for some reason in your head you deserve it. Yeah. 
if a man do half the shit that y'all liberated uh, do or whatever, he's gonna forever look at as a dog, look women stay away from him or whatever. But for you, you want the same thing. Nah, they don't work like that, man. Don't, reality does not work like that. And it, people will be on media and everything and say, no, it's okay. It, it can work like that. You can find one. But logic and reality will set that shit straight, too. Like, like reality and lo- uh, logic ain't loud, man. It just waits for you to just feel it. Talk. I don't Right. It's just we can be we can be in denial all day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can be in denial all day, but the real the the real test is coming. Whatever. Like if you you meet up with a girl and she was out there and but you are having no drama at all. You ain't like whatever you you don't even really know. She just told you. Then okay, but if you know what I'm saying, like if it's one of those situations where she still gets text messages, or I'm at Walmart and this nigga's right there, he's saying hi. You trying to say he's your cousin and shit? Nah, nah, we're gonna cut that shit short. I'm gonna get real. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get real. Uh, or realistic, real quick. You ain't got cousins, bitch. Your family ain't that big. You ain't even from here. Okay. Fuck you, mean. Oh. Well, yeah. And, uh, what was that? If I, could, if, I could, if I could bring up a point real quick, not even a point, but a, a brief story real quick. Oh, some on the same topic. Um, it was a young lady I met in the early early two thousands. Um, this was when we all uh, first first moved to Hampton, I believe, and I was still going doing the back and forth and driving long way and getting still teaching and working at the store. Um, it was when my brother was working at some restaurant. Um, I believe it was Bridget. Um. And it was this young young lady, name began with a T, and she was working there. Um, told me what school she was going to. I'm um, going going to college. And I was like, oh, I, I know that. I know that school. I'm from around there. Um, so automatically I knew that this was the precursor to you becoming a whore. Um, so I uh, began to speak and um, began to talk. It wasn't no relationship type thing because I, at the end of the day, I already knew what was going to happen. So I. I was real vocal with it. I was like, you know, like, I already know what time it is with you. I already know where you're going and what happens there. So, as long as you keep it real with me, you can, we can do whatever it is, whatever. You, feel, you just let me know what's going on and let you know what's going on. You're going to keep it 100% of the So, you let me know. So, I'm coming back and forth doing the, 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 uh, the, the sexual thing. You know, we're doing going back and forth. Um, because when I go back home, I'm, you have a school that's at home. Why not? It's, it's there. Why not? Um, but unbeknownst to her, the whole time, like, once again, you go to school where I'm from. So I already know what goes on then. So when I come back and you're trying to tell me something, I know, and you're not trying to tell me, but I already know. Like, hey, all you have to do is be real. I already saw the signs. I knew you were a drummer whore. Won't well, nobody trying to wipe you. Won't well, no fellas there. I was getting the pretty hard benefits before everyone else got them. Got everyone else to get them. I already know it. You can go ahead and give them to everybody else. Be free. Fly, fly. He got to see the signs, fellas. He got to see the signs. The signs are always there. Whore or pre whore or post whore. The signs are there. Be away. Be there anyway. And, and if you you about that um that porn star life, you better be for that for life. Like you better be for it like it's a game, cause that's recorded history, right? Bro. You, 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 you know you wife up. You know you wife huh? up. 
in the new wife. Are you saying that? Pinky and Pinky like she used to be Pinky. Not at all. She big people. Oh, Pinky is big. She is big toe right now. That's what she is. She's thumb. Um, two thumbs. So, she come on, Pinky. Pinky that joke used to be in the flea market. Oh, no, no. That, that's, no, yeah. yeah. Basically, Pinky done turned into a girl. Oh, oh. Like, Hell, fuck. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, stupid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But moving on, but moving on, moving on. Um, I'm glad we on this topic of whores and uh, shit. Because I, 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 I think it downs into the next conversation a little bit. Uh, it's in the same old book. Now, my, the, the topic I want to bring to you stage today of this week is why is the average working man or the hourly or salary employee looked down on in today's society. Um I don't know if it's men or women who's changing this stigma look on the common working man. I don't know if it's the schemers, the scammers and fast money people out there is is more alluring. Or is the boss life or is boss talk shit and the boss like they don't want to be a boss? Everybody looking down on the, the employee. I don't know what you what, what, just want to bring it to the table. What y'all what's going on? Yeah. Man, that's just it just seems like that's been the case in general lately. Just just in general, because everyone good. It's a lot of people out there that had dreams that they won't ever achieve, and they just end up in settling to their career or whatever. Now, a lot of these people may have some dreams that was, yeah, just like not logical, not reasonable, you know what I'm saying? Not, not achievable. It don't make any damn sense. Um, it might be some people like that or whatever. And then you know, in this day and age, a lot of people are now, they are now looking toward being entrepreneurs and shit like that because now we're getting more knowledge of, like, the benefit of having, like, a benefit under your name and shit like that. But then you also have also the simple fact, and a lot of these jobs now, they're not given the benefits that they used to to our parents, like back in the day, or oh, oh, whatever. Like it used to be a time where you could have just a regular job, and they'll give you a pension, and that pension will set you up for life, or whatever. Now it's like you're lucky to get one in, in general, but that's all minor factors. The main factor is the music, media, and everything makes it makes the employee life look like straight slavery. One. And it just looks like the counterculture is more free in general when they promote it out there. So, I mean, it, well, that's my say. So that's my observation of what I would think. That's exactly uh, why they do that. Uh, like, why employ the employee life is look down uh, upon in general but like if it's like there's also stipulations of that because if you are a person that got the employee life but you're like executive or CEO that that's celebrated you know what I'm saying it's, it's people that's like under 50 grand a year that people look at like yeah I don't want to be pretty much so I would say, like, I think it, it goes down. So I do agree that, like, a uh, huge factor in the uh, propagation and, like, the, the spreading of this type of mentality, right, comes from, like, media. So you got social media, you know, music, like uh, Pat said, where people are, you know, really pumping up this entrepreneurial spirit. Like, this is the way, you know, you got social media where women are talking about, you know, they won't date a man that they 
Should go back to status. So men love things that boost their status because it allows them to be more attractive to women, and they want even a woman to boost their status, like a woman that can boost their status, so that other people find them even more attractive and can they can rise up. Women, yeah. at the same time, also like men with status. So because of that, you get women for one who started off chasing men with status, right? So back in mm-hmm. Dude in the town that owned the businesses, he usually got to stick with a little woman, and everybody else kind of followed suit based on their place and social hierarchy. But then over time, what, as you got feminism and all these other movements, the women's suffrage movement, all these other movements that like kind of push for women to go into the workplace, what you got is a lot of women competing with men, right? So now you got women that are pushing this mentality as well as men. It used to be just men, and then women were more like, you know, I, I just want a man that's going to, you know, love me and take care. Then it became, well, this man got to make a certain figure amount because that's what became desirable. And then because I can make this amount, now you got to match me. So I think that's kind of like, and, and it's just kind of snowballed into this big thing of like everybody's chasing money and status as opposed to like actual, like the everyday shit that makes you be happy. Mm-hmm. A bunch of miserable ass people that's rich as fuck, well educated, got all of these degrees, money, bonds, stocks, you know, overseas accounts. They got these businesses, all these great things, but they got these mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. that happen. So I think, you know what I'm saying? That's, but a lot of it just goes back to like how we interact as males and females kind of like lead to a lot of this. Like even capitalism, like the fact that somebody got to have more than somebody else, it goes back to like, if I got more, then the woman going to find me more attractive. So I'm going to be able to actually procreate and carry on my lineage. And, you know, go back to like the thing. Mm-hmm. The essence of the human being. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty. You hit it right on the head with capitalism, though, because that, all of this is, is just the gradual evolution of the capitalist society in general. Like, if you have a society whose main thing is making a profit, pretty much, how would you expect the culture to be? If everything is about making money in general or whatever, who has the most money, it's to be expected that the culture is going to be like If that's right there, but gradually after a while. I agree. I can agree. Yeah, I'll make some good valid and valid points. Definitely. Definitely. But those of you who are out there making hourly pay of salary pay, big up to you. Because, yeah, I'm about to make the work for us. Without the salary, our employees, you know, can go nowhere and do shit. Go nowhere and get stuff. Sure, sure. But as much as they may be starting to be looked down upon, they are, they are vital to the opposite. So, you know what I mean? Y'all chasing these scammers and these quick money people? And y'all turn past that UPS man who, who been in the company for five years, building his portfolio up, doing whatever the fuck you're doing, and got that good stable income. Good stable income. All right. Scam don't last always. That check, that check don't come every two weeks though. It's not every week. No, you don't like budgeting. No, you may not like budgeting because you have learned new tasks. 
and can't just go out for me for shopping. All that material shit, really, all that shit can be, go, be gone with it a blink of an eye. And if you don't know budgeting, you shouldn't have, shouldn't be talking about the entrepreneurship shit. Because I ain't nothing but budgeting. I'm learning that shit hard. Bro. Mm. Budgeting every penny. If you can give me a guarantee. Uh, women, I want you to realize this one especially. When you're out there and you're searching for that man who gives that quick money and getting that money, that money is disposable, and you realize that you're looking just for that, he already knows you're looking for just for that, just as he counts that money is disposable, you're just as disposable. And men, and men, that also goes with you. If you have, you're around a woman and that's the main thing she's about, you're disposable. If she gave, if she don't want you, she has somebody else waiting. And that's all. I'm that's it. Best thing. Just respect everybody, regardless of how you're getting your paper. As long as you're getting paper and you're grinding for your paper and not taking it from somebody else, respect it. Respect it. Honey, man. As long as y'all there trying to get that paper and you being successful at some point, and you don't have to beat somebody in the head for it and take it from him, I, I got some respect for you. Man. I got some level of respect for you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's see what time is real. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought up success. Because it it, you know that because I can use that as a way to segue to my first topic on today night episode one twenty four. Good and fucking good and fucking good and fucking good. Actually, it's good and fucking good and good and fucking good. Now, Good and fucking Oh man. Well, like you said, space and sex. And um, this past week, the LSU uh, women's basketball team had great success uh, being the champions. I think you muted. Hmm? Shout out Angel Reef, goddammit. Ringer. That's what I'm about to bring up right now. Ringer. And she's a bad. Bring it up right now. What? Tish, your audio keep going out. Go ahead, sir. Oh, okay. But, no. um, yeah, the, uh, Big ups to them for their victory uh, this this weekend. Uh, but the controversy is Angel and Angel Reese and her controversy of how uh, she was taunting the um, players and the, uh, the opposite team when she did the Tony Ayo, a.k.a. the John Cena, to the girl that can't see me. And they, they tried to... Uh, Basically, they try to like punish her for doing it, but uh, it was brought up that her um her p- previous coaches and herself was saying that that was a double standard right there, because other players from other teams they taunt all day and they don't ever have a problem, but because the black girl on this winning team win and over this all white all white basketball team or whatever now it becomes a problem, and then it even got to a point. I don't know if y'all saw this, but I think because of the controversy, Joe Biden was like, oh, we can bring both teams up or whatever to celebrate or whatever. It was good about it. Yeah. It was good about it. About it yeah. and, and people wasn't agreeing. I don't really agree. With you. Now, all of a sudden, they get... When have you ever heard of the losing team coming? Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a lot of First of all, keep opening your dick. 
Jill Biden. You can't be that damn tone deaf and aloof and not realize that, like, you've been in politics all these years. You've seen other championship teams come to the White House. You know how this works. So for you to even invite them, it shows where your mind was at and how classless you are and how, like, disrespectful you ought to be to the LSU world. Um, most importantly, amazing congratulations to the LSU women's team for the completely dominating the competition throughout this tournament run. Um, it would have been dope to see them against South Carolina. South Carolina kind of begging that ass earlier this uh, year, Paul. But it's not about one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 that would have been a really good matchup. But uh, shout out to Kaylin. Uh, first of all, shout out to Angel Reese. Shout out to Flaugé. Shout out to the, uh, what's the other girl name? Morris. So Morris. But she bad. She, she a beast with that shit too. Like, the LSU team was just a team full of dogs, man. Like, they, they, were, they were destined to win it. Like, you saw it all season where they just had, like, they were going to outplay. And it wasn't like, you know what I'm saying, necessarily they always had the best player on the floor, but they always had the best team. You think that, that, that just goes back to, like, you know, every other basketball game. You know, look at the NBA, even. You know, look at the Warriors and shit. Like, these teams are – it's dope to see team basketball, like, real, like, all right. Everybody just do your job, and we got to fuck these people up. I like to see that all the that mentality still around basketball when it's becoming more individual. Shout out to them. Um, shout out to them for bringing the first basketball championship to LSU. LSU to have some really dope men's players over the years, you know, including like the Stacks and others, but, you know, Ben Simmons, all of them, but they never won the championship. You know, kind of fours and all that, but never won the Shout out to them for that. Um, yeah. Shout out to Caitlin Clark for being a motherfucking beast. Like, she is a female Steph Curry, and she has the chance to, like, really add a new dimension to women's basketball that could hopefully maybe bring in more, you know, some revenue and more attention to the sport. Um, I'm really hoping that this championship game kind of gets more people behind with the basketball because it is not always just a type of thing. It's really to keep bringing this type of a a level of play and a level of like, you know, gamesmanship to it and have this level of skill like a Caitlin Clark that's like, sure. Well, I, I'm stepping across half court and firing at her and wet. You feel me? Like, that's something that we haven't seen from the women's game before now. So I like that we're seeing new things. Hopefully, it continue. Um, but yeah, man, just the, the tone depth and the, just the racism and just the, Overall, just disrespect of these young women has been just disgusting. Mm-hmm. Hey, these women are carrying themselves not, in class, though. Not, I respect the way they're carrying themselves in interviews, but it's just, come on. Man. Like, these young women, they ain't did nothing wrong. Uh-huh. Like, they play, like, throughout the whole tournament, these uh, women from all of the teams were taunting each other. Kaylin Clark was, she started the, the, the doing the you can't see me taunt. She was the. That's why it, it got brought back up. It was a throwback in her face, and the fact that you're trying to like bring a rift between these girls who play basketball with each other, you know what I'm saying, on the same uh, against each other since they were in high school. So they already have a relationship. They know each other. They have a competitive relationship. They they are they're comfortable with taunting each other. Like these girls are not taking offense to it. So why is everybody else so up in arms about the shit that the actual parties involved? I like yo, I cool. Like. I'm gonna get her next time. I'm gonna get you know, like they they, they understand the, the the game. Cause everybody got a pain and want to be a head box and shit. They ain't got nothing to do with it. And 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 with sports, you want that aggression. You want that 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 shit talking. It 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 brings something to it. It brings that competitiveness to the game. You know what I'm saying? Like you keep saying you want more motherfuckers to watch the good game. Mm-hmm. Shit. They criticize motherfuckers when they when they do what they was going to do to watch more women sport. And big ups to them for doing the thing that, that got everybody to watch. Like it's a lot more people that actually like than normal that will actually tune into the game more than the regular um a uh, male college basketball from what I was hearing. Yeah, it was, it was probably one of the largest female championship games. 
مش هو what I want to see is people like as a as a former athlete and former coach I want to see people stop like interfering with athletes on the court if they're doing some off the court activities that's a problem cool if they're doing some off the court activities on the court cool but a lot of these athletes they grow up playing in the same AAU circuit they grow up knowing each other this is not the former athlete where I'm meeting you for the first time in the NCAA championship or the first time in in the uh, NBA finals or the WNBA. Like, I've known you for years. We've played on the same teams against each other. Like, we've known each other. We, we have a rapport. So a lot of these people are not, like, actually hating each other. It's just, hey, man, I'm about to whoop your ass today. It's the same shit you do with your homeboys when you go to the park and play 21. Like, you don't, dis- you don't dislike your homie. You just, yeah, we just talking shit. Just playing basketball. Like, it's just basketball. This I feel like this all started. James Naismith was talking shit when he was putting up the peak basket. A motherfucker who had never been in a competitive situation don't understand competitive between two competitors. Indeed. Exactly. Okay. All you can do is look credit all you can do is look and criticize on political standards. And about politics when we're in the heat of competition. We're about the competition. And those two in the heat, they know this. Those teams, they know this. Oh. They're putting on a uh, they're putting on a show, playing a game for y'all. Shut the fuck up so I can enjoy you. Or turn the fucking channel. Exactly. It's entertaining. Right. I'm a firm believer too, like if you haven't been a coach or an athlete, at least on a high school level or a drug, probably should not be like a commentator or like sport pundit. Coach. Like one of these debate show people and then like, because you're missing a perspective that's a huge piece of like the conversation you know, what it's like in the game. Like if you ever get on the sideline as a coach or a player, a athletic director, a, a person that has like, you know, tangible direct investment in the game then you know like oh this shit's real like like that moment I don't want them to win I don't want them to have a good day I don't I want them like yeah oh their quarterback is throwing up great that's fine for us right now don't mean I hate that person it just means that doing this game like as long as they're going to be okay I don't want things to go well for them because I want to win and they want the same. And then after the game, we're going to shake hands and talk shit, and then we're going to go probably have a beer somewhere together. Like, these dudes are going out to dinner right after the game and having drinking wine and shit. Most exactly. Of them going to the strip club together, having wings and shit, right after they just beat out each other on the court. We'll go right and hang out together. So, like, or go on vacation together and be on banana boats and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's... It, I think we got to stop looking at things in such an old school mentality of like the Jordan era and the eighties and the seventies and the sixties when people like were like, okay, I'm meeting you for the first time probably right now. So if I don't like you all the initial game, then okay, we might have a real issue. But these kids, if they did have an issue, they didn't got that shit out by the end of high school. They done seen like at least a good five to 10 times just on the AU and high school search. Like, these kids are traveling nationally to play each other now. So, like, unless you're an international player, for the most part, you've seen these other dudes. You've built a rapport. You know, they're like, okay, this is the trash talk. This is the one that's quiet. And this is, like, you can already scout it, so it ain't no big thing when y'all get to each other. You don't understand it, to just be quiet and just see what happens. Because a lot of times... Stay your mother. Like... Oh, nothing. Like these girls are silly. If you see the interviews, these girls are not up in a, like they're calm. Like even the girl that's supposedly supposed to be offended, she's the one that got taunted. She's like, no, in the handshake line, everybody was really nice to me. Everybody was cool. You know, me, you know, me and Angel, we, we have a, we know each other, we, everything is good. Like, so why is everybody else so bad for two? The one person that should be mad, take away from her. Like, let the, if, if she mad, okay, let's see why she mad. Then if you got me taking her or something, then you go ahead and you can rally your team. 
but forget about it. Oh, I'm happy. Be happy. Yeah, let me say this. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of people of of some some standing who had a lot of disrespectful comments to make on the the young lady um, on that national team. We would call that a class that was whole classic shit because she chose to taunt the losing team. Motherfucker, where you do you think mm-hmm. I came from taunting the motherfucker? You who have this standing and have this money at some point taunted someone too. Remember, sport, remember it's competition. In your business competition, I'm quite sure the losing party or whatever business deal doesn't get a gracious handshake and a hug. I'm I'm quite sure these young ladies were sportsmen. Here during the heat of competition, beginning and at the end. See them for this day. If you have a negative opinion, hey, this ain't one of them times to let that shit out. Keep your mouth closed. Every critic should be a critic. You're a most critic, you're not a sports fan. And if you're a sports fan, some of you shouldn't be critics. So let the young boys play the attention they should deserve. Let the winners only invitation they deserve. Losers, as they say in the NBA and the NFL, losers go home. Same thing to reign supreme and lady sports as well. Losers is all wrong. I don't care about being politically correct and like, there's no losers. No, you lost the competition. You had less points than the other team. You were not the victim. The opposite of victor is losers. You lost. Go home. Just the price of Coca Cola. Go home. There's no trophy for second place. Go home. I. The, the same T ball where you try to make all the kids feel good, self esteem, even that shit is nothing. No, you lost, you lost. Understand what a loss is. You build self esteem, build character, you build yourself up and your team up with that loss. Because next year, you got to come back and you're off the same, that's the same play. You learn more from losses than wins. Yeah. A lot of motherfuckers out here talking that shouldn't be talking, man. But hmm, that's just my perspective. I don't know. Keep holding your dick. Yeah, I was. I would say let let these women uh, players be basketball players. Don't don't be saying that they need to be ladylike and all that other stuff. Let them be players. Let them enjoy the game just like male players. You know, what I'm saying? like what you want to walk around with dresses and shit, ball. Like that sounds. You're sounding misogynistic female players. And as you said, man, you're talking about a team that probably had more hair and nails and eyelashes and all these other things that these women like to wear. Mm -hmm. So, like, these are not, like, some old... They're not manly-looking women. women. These are lady-like young women. They just... They're bald, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, you ain't right, man. You just that fuck right. Fuckery. Fuckery. God damn it. Oh, man. But like I said, it's entertainment, sports entertainment. Let us not. Let us be entertained. You know what I'm saying? And also this week in sports entertainment, WrestleMania 39. I don't know if y'all got saw it, but it was a pretty good goddamn WrestleMania. I got to see so much. Um, uh, was the uh, just a highlight. My favorite matches was the uh, like Gunther versus uh, Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus because that was incredibly violent yeah. <laughs> in general. Um, and the Longest reigning tag team champions, uh, the Usos, finally had their uh, tag team reign ended with Sami Zayn and K 
Kevin Owens win and you know, undisputed tag team And I, it was a good match. That was the first night. And the whole night was uh, both nights were hosted by the Miz and Snoop. Other, what was the other one? The other, you said what? I wish Cody Rhodes had a one. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to lie, though. I really like Bloodline storyline and everything, but that build up. I, I do believe they're building up for something. I think they build up for Cody Rhodes and Wendy. Yeah, you said what now? You can tell by the Usos wearing different outfits. You had one in the all white. Like, that's usually a sign that he's turning Paragon. So, you know, he's about to turn a good guy type shit. So, mm-hmm. a lot of shit going on. But um, I will say the highlight of the whole thing to me was Bianca Belair. Oh, yeah. Her, her and Jay Cargill are quickly becoming two of my favorite wrestlers, period. Male, female, or otherwise, like just as wrestlers, like I fuck with it. Like uh-huh. the, the, the the way they tell stories in the ring, the the actual wrestling ability, the way they don't take no shit, the power, the the, the like agility, like they just good wrestling. Right? Uh-huh. And I'm enjoying the watching their like little ride. So like, it's, and it's dope to have two black women like running the female division in their respective. Anyway. I was um, what was it? Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins. Logan Paul is a motherfucking beast. Yo, Yo. he's a great loser. I'm I'm willing to just go ahead and put it on record. He can go. Yes. Yo, yo, every match. Yo, that was a great match. Seth Rollins won. And I felt like yeah. that was I love it. Was so Anytime he is in WWE ring, it is it makes for one hell of a you're gonna see some crazy shit. So look, man, I'm a fan. I ain't even gonna lie about it. He's he's a good man. So yo, like I don't know who like I wanted to hate. Mm-hmm. I can want to. He's a good like he, he's he's legit. He puts on a show. He's a showman. He's a definitely a showman. Um, I really don't care about the Rey Mysterio and Dominique Mysterio because I think Dominique Mysterio is a horrible character. It's corny in general, but I'm glad Rey Mysterio won because I like Murray Mysterio. Um, I really didn't care about Brock Lesnar versus Almost because I don't like Almost character, and I don't like when any black character loses because I'm racist like that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see. He's right now. He's uh, notated where I. He's gonna be some critics sooner or later. But um, I'm 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 very much Ethan Ray. The thoughts yes. of do not necessarily reflect the thoughts of the problem. Ever, yeah. ever, my opinions don't ever reflect the other two things. Three other. Comments may not reflect on it. Bring all the heat to me. But uh, um, uh, the Edge versus Finn Balor match that was that was all right. Uh, Finn Balor got ahead. He had staples. He has like tech on the top of his head. And he had staples across his forehead for when Edge threw that ladder at his head. Whoa. that's crazy. Yeah, and um, one of my favorite highlights of the night, Snoop. Snoop, boy, he know how to adapt. I'll tell you, I'll tell you much. They had, Miz had a match with Pat McAfee the first night, and then he confronted Snoop. Feeling like Snoop set him up for that match when he wasn't prepared in his fancy suit. The same thing happened again, and then Snoop brought out Shane McMahon. Um, you know, Shane McMahon got that same, you know dance move with the fist and everything and Shane McMahon is old. He's old. Oh, man. Yeah. And and in the situation he tried um you know they did the turnbuckle movement where they're going back and forth and he jumped over or something and did something to his knee and he just was out. He was just like, out. Snoop <laughs> Snoop saved the day. It was no way to like make that look good. 
at all. Yeah. No, he was on the ring with his legs in the air. Pause. Wait for it, Mr. Lopra. Why? Shut the fuck up, <laughs> But no, he, he got hit by the man or something. And like, no, he, he tried to dodge the man or whatever by like either doing a flip oh. or jumping. Miz, he, uh, Shane, he was in a fight with Miz. Um, probably over some previous beef, Miz and Shane, or, or whatever, long time ago. Shane came in and they were going back and forth on the turnbuckle. He was dodging and he dodged the wrong way and twisted his ankle. He was down. But then Snoop came in and he was like, oh, 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 hell no, nah, Miz. You did that to my boy. And then as soon as he came in the ring, he punched his mitt. Punched hey, his hey, mitt. hey, hey, hey. I'm eating your money. Hey, hey, me. No. But he punched his mitt, right? Then they just have a makeshift on uh, impromptu meet, uh, match between Miz and Snoop. And when I tell you, Snoop ran over to the turnbuckle real slow. He had to slow bop down the turnbuckle. <laughs> and then, like, the people's elbow. <laughs> that shit was oh, funny. Yeah. He, he even got Triple H to uh, respect for uh, basically just where the chain dropped off. What that? He nope. said, I was, Triple H was like, I, I don't know. After that, I have so much more respect for Snoop. Hold on, Paul. Hey, Face, you okay? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Well, you were pulling on your mic over there, buddy. Hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Oh no! But um, yeah, that was pretty much wrestling as a whole. Um, and you know, and uh, yeah, wins, oh, wins some, I lose some. Maybe. That's pretty good, huh? I don't know. I was just doing Dusty Rhodes. Well, they ain't doing that. Well, before you move on to the next topic. Tomorrow, the UFC 287. Israel Adesanya versus Alex, whatever you ask it, whatever his last name is, with rematch and title. Yeah. He lost last time, um, TKO, fifth round. He lost last time. This is his third loss against this motherfucker. And she said this is his last time trying to fuck, fight this motherfucker this time. So he got to move on. Um, he has the odds on bet in favor, even though he lost last time. So we'll see what happens. Is is it on uh, Hulu or ESPN Plus? Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. ESPN Plus is to be on. To be on that shit. Israel Adesanya going to get his ass with again. Well, I'm saying that motherfucker, he fighting that, that one that one punch to catch him with. It, it's over. I'm from what around here. Motherfucker left hand. Fucking beast. Uh, you know how I say, no matter how big or how small you are, always take that one prop, one properly placed punch to just turn shit around. This, this, this motherfucker, Alex, whatever his last name is, uh, Alex P. Because I can't pronounce that name, Panana, whatever. This motherfucker is the biggest motherfucking middleweight I've ever fucking seen. This nigga should be a light heavyweight. Just cutting weight down to a motherfucking middleweight. Nigga's mm-hmm. a bitch. So, get the title now. We'll, we'll see if he can defend it. Hmm. At the end of the day, in the fight game, it's a lot of times it's not necessarily like better per se, but like more mm-hmm. like who it's figured the other person out for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm along the way, like you might be the better fighter, mm-hmm. technically or whatever, but it's that one person that just yeah. figured you out enough to be able to whoop mm-hmm. your ass all the time. They might not be able to beat nobody else sometimes. But they got your number. Like in football, you see it with some teams, and like you see it all across sports. But especially in the fight game, where like it's so like one on one. If I don't know shit enough, I might not be able to figure out nobody else. But if I got you, I'm gonna get you. I 
I paid them three blemishes on your record. And everybody else, but I'm gonna beat them three. And then maybe you know, on my record, but I done got your ass them three times. I can't I tell you who won't be talking shit when we meet up at the reunion. No man. I, I can't no other song but just this one song on the piano. Yeah. And I play that song on the bad motherfucker. It's that Rocky Marciano shit. He beat Joe Lewis as a He showed us the yeah, How big of a Joe Lewis fan you are, what you ain't gonna do is talk shit about Rocky Marciano. Because that motherfucker whipped your ass. He got you. Yeah, you got it, man. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, it's when, they, when they were winning their championship. And it was just like, God damn. They beat these damn giants, though. These motherfucking giants. These niggas are sorry all year, but they just get hot right when they come time to play our ass, huh? Every time, they just want to whoop our ass, but they don't beat nobody else. They be sorry as fuck. He's out here throwing 30,000 interceptions. But they get to us. This motherfucker look like Joe Montana. This niggas out here just bombing. Okay. It, 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 it don't make no sense. The coach ain't better. The team ain't better. But these motherfuckers get to you. Fuck the Douglas. This nigga didn't win another fight out. This fat bitch went on an idiot decline. Yeah, Tyson, nobody over there. Shit out of Tyson, boy. Yeah. One, two, Tyson ass, boy. Pop, 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 pop. Ha, ha. He went to that nigga into oblivion. He said that nigga, he said that nigga on a downward spiral. That nigga never recovered from. This is one of the main reasons I would never bet on like I I bet on team sports before I bet on the UFC fight. Even if even when they got the odds so planned out, how the fight can play out at a blink of an eye, you never know. How the fight go? How the fight gonna go? You know, that's why I, I love the sport because it's anytime anything can fucking happen. But I've never bet on that damn sport. Tackle him. This nigga was fucking everybody up. Go Leonard. With some tap 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 punches and beat the fuck out of him. Now mind you, go away. Nobody else would have been able to throw them light ass punches at this nigga and beat him. This nigga stood in there with the hit man and ate them shit and fucked him up. You got hit, man. But he but Sugar Ray Leonard just knew that nope. That's the second. Ain't doing shit with them punches, but they look good. That's all it takes, man. You just gotta know your number. Because the fight is so right long. Like, I can knock oh, you out. To knock you out. I really, like, and especially UFC, where there's so many ways to win, I can have you in lock, where it's not really inflicting any pain, but you just can't do nothing for a long period of time. And just because I'm in a dominant position for more of the fight, I win. Now, you mm-hmm. fighter, but I just happen to have caught you in a clutch and stole a round that I just needed, and well, now we there. Everything else was a draw. But because I got you that one time, oh, got you. Bet you won't move the combo more. Yeah, I know. We're going to just lay here for a minute. Yep. Go ahead and catch your breath, player. We're going to just be here. How you, how your kids? Everybody good? I'm in the mind. I'm going to let us know when the 10 seconds is because I don't know. I'm strong as fuck. Hold it, bitch. Some good fights tomorrow. Good fight. Be interesting. Good fight. 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 Tyson Fury, but Tyson Fury joking around this year. So, um, even like, Bellator said, uh, mm-hmm. Bellator, uh, yeah, he would. He's dog shit out of there. Um, yes, Bellator, everybody's saying he's losing value. Day by day, he's losing value because he's not signing contract. He needs to just go ahead and sign 
with one of these major major entities that's wanting to sign him and give him big bread because just based on his name. Like it ain't that your skill set is it, 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 there. The main thing about you is your punching power. You just got a ground game like late last year. So your mm-hmm. ground game is still in is your your striking ability, the technique is not amazing. You throw while you know to throw wild punches just when you hit a motherfucker, just like it's an escort. So that's it. That, that's it. So I mean, even if you were to go against John Jones and, and what say John Jones, they, they, they let some type of fight go, and John Jones fought for UFC and he fought for another entity, and still wouldn't go because John Jones is so technical. It's so, like he he he's going to hit you. Yeah, he, he's going to hit you. So that that punching power, that extreme punching power, those wild cowboy shots you trying to throw, they're not going to be effective because. That's what you know for. He's going, John, you know, I'm going to the fight. Okay, I know what you know for. Let me pick, let me pick off and shit. I know you ain't going. And I'm going to stay away from your power. Like Stipe did the first fight, but Stipe was, won't, won't predict and all. They got to have a ground game. Their second fight, all with the ground game and still with them wild ass punches. But not going to, the wild ass punches they got in Ghana, his name's sake, take away their wild ass punches. Like motherfucker. Derrick Lewis and all motherfucking all Derrick Lewis did they 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 just held each other out. They fought for with two wild ass punching powers, wild ass punches. Looks like born down that born ass fight. But I do want to see him. What do you think? I said he remind me of like a stronger Kimbo Slice. Like there's a lot of like. Power, but it's not necessarily a lot of substance to the technique. But I do feel mm-hmm. cool to see what John Jones does on that because he does have to come inside at some point to, to win the fight against us. Like he's going to have to bring it down leg kicks over and over again. Able to do it. Um, oh no, just like he got um old boy that um on me on Friday last um Cyril gone. And when he brought for him, the, the shit was over the first the first round. Let me get your ass, get you down to the ground. As soon as I put my hand on you, I'm gonna grab you on. My wrestling game is like I'm a, I'm a champion wrestler, so you, you you're not fucking with this unless you're a champion wrestler too. You're not fucking with John Jones ground game, and there ain't that many heavyweights out there that got their ground game like this. They have endurance, they have power, but unless you're in a total package, yeah, John know. Jones is a formidable foe. What well, he don't in there with that dad bod again? Fuck that. <laughs> That nigga literally, he literally got up off the couch. Oh, okay, it's the day. All right, so come on, do this. Let me go. Let me go with you, go real quick. We got all of God, y'all. Like, that nigga was like, what the fuck, nigga? Yo, bro, you ain't training. Just wait over here quick, man. I'm done right here. Nigga, like, Dan Wayans in the Great White Heights. Yeah. I am in shape. Now. <laughs> What the fuck? The round mound or rebound face ass? Yeah. Yeah. The fight I want to see most of all is um, Jorge Masvidal, um, Gilbert Burns fight. Two two motherfucking scrappers. They in the up there in the ranks. I think they're both top ten. Both of them need a victory because they'll propel both of them in closer to a title shot. Jorge, like he gave him a bad loss to um, Covington, and he ran up on Covington in the street. And they got to see that battle in that court case and that stupid shit, shit. But they were burning, like, he a motherfucking, he a motherfucking dog in the ring. Like, hey, go for this shit. No Rocky. Short, talking motherfucker. Get on the ground, get on the feet. So. You know who I want to be? Who? Joe Rogan against anybody. Who? Joe Rogan against anybody? Yeah, I'd watch that. Yeah? Yeah, I'd watch that. Have y'all ever well, seen anybody? And that motherfucker go, and I done seen him do like his little training on the bag and shit. That motherfucker, his kicks is fucking ridiculous. I seen one of his amateur, like when he was doing like jujitsu and shit. I didn't see no mixed martial arts with him. I seen one of his jujitsu. I didn't even see back with him. He like a, he like a, some degree black belt. Uh, yeah, I believe, I believe. So that nigga always training. He loves jujitsu. It's like when he got the job, on. Uh, he's like, this is a dream job. He's going to commentate for him and see. It's like the first time, like look at the first um the first match he he was all giddy as a fucking kid. He was like, like you motherfucking see a kid who take somewhere they always wanted to go and never got a chance to go, 
And then, you know, he took some chain links there. Yeah, he was like this. Hey, you got it. No, but I know it. It looked like if he kicked some shit, he would break some of the shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Them shit, like, when you see them, like, them shit is crazy. Like, even compared to other MMA fighters and martial artists, like, that shit, like, even compared to, like, Muay Thai fighters and Taekwondo, uh, fight, like, that shit sound crazy compared to that. Like, what the it's fuck? Taking, it's just that game. It's just crazy. Turn is stupid. I, I want to like, see my court out. He's generating, like, he... Like, yes. I want to see Michael John White fight someone. Yeah, like, seen... he's talking cash shit. Yeah, like I I seen him. Yeah, like, I want to see it. Train and like you know you see the movies and stuff like that or whatever and like when he do do moves and stuff like that it, it does look clean. I just want to see him in an actual fight just to see how he looks. Because like, I I don't think I I don't think I've seen that ever or like if it, if it is I ain't like no video out. That's what I was going to tell you, Tiz, uh, about uh, wrestling. The the Monday night after Raw, uh, after WrestleMania, uh, it was supposed to be uh, Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes versus um, Solo Sokoa, the other Uso, basically, and and Roman Reigns, and then. Then Brock Lesnar just went in at F5 Cody Rhodes and proceeded to beat Cody Rhodes. So I don't know what they're going with the Cody Rhodes story, but it looks pretty exciting. I just like him because Cody, he, he's a wrestler. No, I watched that, that, that match with him when he had his own pectoral. That is one of the most. Sickening looking things because if you've ever torn a muscle and you understand like what that feels yeah. like, just be sitting still. But then you have to lift things and get things hit into it and have chairs and stuff dug into it and to be uh-huh. nigga. The boy, like he, he gained so much of my respect with that man. Yeah, he 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 one of he one of them ones. He one of them yeah. like he could he could be a goat if he keep on this together. Like that's that's legendary shit. That's like uh Stone Cold with the bloody mask or mm-hmm. saying like Man time. Yeah, or even uh Dusty Rose when he got his leg broke in the ring. I mean uh, Rick Flair when he uh got his match or Shane Douglas when he threw the belt down on the ground and you know, talked about ECW like it's all of these like that's one of the moments that like put you in one of them. Like okay, when they do the highlight reel packet, that's going in there. Mm-hmm. Like that's gonna be on the on the the the, the, the promo packet for the hundredth anniversary and type shit. Like that. Oh man, but yep. Yeah. I just get on to the next subject. Happy that I got Hulu and ESPN Plus so I can see um, UFC this weekend. And, and yeah, WrestleMania, it was top tier. So, um, from basically matches and the cage octagon and judges judging people in the cage octagon to judges putting people in the cage. There we go. That's my segue. All right. Call guy. Hey. This next subject, Trump got arrested, and um, uh, he didn't get mugshot because I think they were afraid if they if he got a mugshot of when he got arrested, he would probably take that picture, and make T-shirts and memorabilia and mugs and everything, and make a profit off of it. So that's one point. But they are gonna make him uh, do finger in New York. But um, yeah, he basically got prosecuted for. Um, Misusing, um, what do you call it? The uh, can, can, can the election funds to for hush money, basically. Stormy yeah. Daniels and a couple of other people. But uh, the whole time he was talking shit about the judge in, in general. So, but the court case and proceedings are still going on. We don't know yet what 
is actually uh, if I can open up this link, I can tell you a little bit more, but this thing is acting up. So let me go ahead. So here we take away. For the first time in U.S. history, a former president surrendered to law enforcement and placed under arrest. He has 30 accounts for false designed to conceal damaging information in unlawful activity for the 2016. That's basically what he's on. Crux of the case centers over uh, on a hundred and thirty thousand dollars in hush money payments that trump then fixer michael cohen made to adult film star stormy daniels and uh, prosecutors also outlined a thirty thousand dollar payment to a former trump tower doorman who claimed to have a story about a child trump had a out of wedlock and they so yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much all it is to it. They're still going through the proceeding, um, in general. But uh, this whole court case, it just it's just hilarious in general. They even have pictures of everybody around Donald Trump laughing at him. <laughs> it, it matters. Uh, the last thing I was going to put out uh, for the fuckery is you said what? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's. it's it, this shit is just fucking hilarious. Um, what's not hilarious is um, I thought I should bring it up because this is an app that everyone uses right now, but the Cash App founder, Bob Lee, was fatally stabbed in San Francisco. I don't know. It just interests me just for the simple fact that, that what did you do to Make somebody want to fatally stab. I almost that be good. It just makes Man. me wonder is this story behind it or what was he stabbed at? Like what? What location? Mm-hmm. Where was he stabbed at? What location? Say? Where was he stabbed at? As in what location? San Francisco. Uh, it's not. It doesn't reveal exactly where. Yeah, it doesn't really actually say no more of that. It just says that he stabbed. <laughs> uh, pretty much. It say how much uh, around two thirty-five a.m. on Tuesday, and he died in the hospital. Pretty much. But they didn't reveal no more than that he was stabbed and he ended up dying in the hospital in this um, in this part of it. What's sad to say this guy named it could have been for something because of someone or could have just been random. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I guess more will be revealed um later on once they get into basically more in the investigation but but yeah right now they just brought it up that he was stabbed uh, on Tuesday in San Francisco and it was like 2.35 a.m. in the morning pretty much but uh, rest in peace to Mr. Bob Lee uh, founder of the cash and that is the fuckery for tonight fuckery well, as the fuck are you? It's always good to, you know, reconnect community. Do we have any black businesses this week? We got all my here. Not any new ones, yeah. All right, then. We'll support our black business. By going to your cash app and your dollar sign P-O-P-M-A-T-I-Z-1. Or you can go to buymeacoffee.com back to the partners. 
you can donate there for as little as a dollar. You can also sign up for a membership there, which means you can stage at the perch. You can also go to Spot of Our Anchor and sign up for a monthly membership, which gives you the uh, ability to support our podcast at four ninety nine every month and allow us to keep the lights on and basically continue to you know produce this content for y'all. Um, as well, if you've given us money. Or you wanted something back to give you, and now you want something to go back to your money. Hey, how can they do that? Well, you can go to the store online. That store name is ArtreeClothing.com. Once again, ArtreeClothing.com. ArtreeClothing.com. A R T R E Clothing.com. And no, here on the Pod is Five Fans, we will not spell clothing for you. But we can offer you a promo code. If you go to the web page on the top of the web page, you use the promo code right there at the top of it. Save some money. 15, 20 percent if you look. Hey, rtreclothing.com. Thank you. And after you just spent some money with us, man, you just gave us some money to support, or you decided to, you know, buy some merch and, you know, rep your AC83 and or partner gear, please make sure that you contact us. How can they do it? Oh, oh. That's sad. T H E P. Oh wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. Yeah. How can they do that, Pat? At oh. sad. T H E P O D N A S. Oh, at sad. T H E P O D N A S. That's the Twitter, the Twitch. That is TikTok. That's the Instagram. And Facebook is fake. Uh, Tis. Um, I apologize, everybody. That y'all had to move here. Go ahead, keep moving. Have a great week, y'all. Uh, thank you for playing. You one of them. Right. I got to say, man, I've been working doubles. Uh, six days a week for the past two hours. Uh, we are out. 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 We are out.